So introduction of rate is a very interesting twist into how the Kenya real estate market will be working from now on. Because now we have an opportunity to participate in the real estate market without having to be kept away by huge sums of money that are ordinarily required. <music> So now with the introduction of rates in Kenya, it's, it's a very interesting twist to how the real estate market will play because now you have an opportunity to play in this market even without large sums of money that were previously required for you to be part of it. So now with as little as 20,000 shillings, and this is little in, in terms of in real estate terms, yeah, you will have ownership in some of the malls we have in this country, the office blocks, the residential estates, some of the hospitals, the schools, yeah, without having to save up and wait to have large sums of money to actually invest in this. So secondly is that you'll get to be a player in the real estate market without having to go through the complex process of owning real estate. You don't have to go through transfers, you don't have to go through paying stamp duty, but you will actually be a player in the real estate market. The other aspect is liquidity. We know that real estate is pretty illiquid as an investment on its own. But now with a rate, and the rate will be trading in the Nairobi Securities Exchange, it makes investing in real estate in this case a lot more liquid. Yeah. So anytime from the 24th of November, if you want to get out of your investment in the rate, just go to the, to the Securities Exchange, ask one of the brokers there to sell your stake and actually just give you your money which you can then take elsewhere also if you want to get back in you just go to the securities market and they will be able to purchase shares for you in the rate and you're there so it's no longer the six months to nine months that it takes to be in and out of real estate this is a lot more liquid and it is for availability of such investments that the government took steps to change the the NSE, it's, it's now the Nairobi Securities Exchange to allow for more securities to trade in it rather than stocks, which is what we are used to the Nairobi Stock Exchange, yeah? But it's actually the Nairobi Securities Exchange because even this as a security will also be trading there. So the other advantage is diversification. With just 20,000 shillings, you'll be playing in various subsectors of the real estate market and not just one. Like before it would be so limiting, like if you think uh, where you can invest 20,000 shillings, it would possibly be bare land. But now you will be playing in a mall or actually a couple of malls, office blocks, residential estates. So the portfolio is diversified to also shield the investor from... You see, at times these various subsectors will play differently in terms of their returns. So you're shielded from the effects of that by the diversification of the portfolio. The other aspect is simplicity of tax. So uh, the current incentive by the government is that income from a rate portfolio will not be subject to either corporation tax or income tax at 30%. The only time that income will be taxed is at, uh, it's when it's being redistributed to the investors, which will just be withholding tax at 15%. Therefore, there'll be a tax saving from investing in this portfolio rather than a direct investment in real estate. Another advantage is the regulatory oversight, which will lead to transparency. Yeah? So in this case, the Stanley Fahari I rate is under regulation of the Capital Market Authority. So it means they will have their eyes on what is happening in the management of this rate on a day to day. Yeah? So it, it gives the investor the comfort that the regulators are watching. In addition, there's quite a diverse panel of professionals who are involved in making a rate work. Yeah? So there's quite a couple of people working together to ensure the success of this. Transparency is also required because the investors have to understand where their money is being put into and how much they're getting out. Yeah? So in this case, transparency in real estate will really be increased. And like certain transactions where you may not know what the real figures are, in this case, we will have to know what is really going on, yeah? And so the proposal from the, the Stanley Fahari IRIT is that 80% of the returns on the portfolio in each year will be redistributed to the investors, yeah? So what we are saying is this, yeah? They'll take the money between the 2.6B 
and the 12.5 billion, they shall purchase income generating real estate. And actually they're going for properties that are already in the income generation stage, yeah? Like malls that are already running, office blocks that are already occupied, yeah? So the income they receive from this will then be redistributed to the investors. 80% of it has to be paid out. They can only retain 20%. So possibly, remember we said you have to maintain real estate, yeah? So you'll have to keep investing in the properties for them to keep generating. So they can keep 20% for that, but 80% has to be redistributed. Also remember the beauty is, yeah, in the commercial properties, because some of these properties are already running, it means there's already signed leases of up to six years. It means for the next couple of years that one, the income is assured and it's also very likely to, it, it's easy to project what the income shall be irrespective of what is happening in the market, yeah? The inflation and all that may not really affect it because the figures have already been locked down in the leases, being an advantage to you as an investor because, yeah, your income for the next couple of years is actually guaranteed. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.